If you're new to the concept of growing food in hydroponic, I'll show you how to make your own system using these bins. Also, I'll walk you through how to make your own natural liquid nutrients. Now, this is one way that we've been able to grow our food 365 days in a year. For us, gardening never stops and we truly enjoy what we do. It's also rewarding to be able to grow your own food and have access to it anytime in any season and not rely so much on buying greens from the store. So hopefully this video can get you started to grow your own food. To build a deep water hydroponic culture, you'll need the following. A tote bin that's about 3 gallons or more, an air pump, air stone, and clear tubing. You also need a net pot, like a clay pebble or rock wool as a medium. Choose the right bin. We ended up going with a 3 gallon Rubbermaid tote. This bin is actually very strong and durable and easy to work with. The lid won't snap easily when you make your circular cuts and it's also a food safe container with a PP number 5 label. Now the first thing that you want to do is drill a hole on top of the bin to insert your tubing. Then attach the air stone which will be submerged in the water. Connect the other end of the tubing into an air pump. The pump should be placed above water level to prevent from backflow. And if you're setting up more than one container, choose a pump with multiple outlets. When you fill the container, the water should just sit below the clear tubing and about 1 to 2 inch above the bottom of the pot. Eventually, the water level will drop, top off with water once or twice, and then add nutrients once a month. The pot that I'm using is called Net Pot and they come in different sizes. You can also use just regular small pots but these will last much longer. I went with the 3 inch net pots which allows me to plant a little bit more. To make circular cuts on the lid, I use a drill bit attachment called hole saw. These are fairly easy to use and they come in many different sizes as well. I'll add the link to my description so you know where to get them. For this project, you want to use a 3 inch circular hole saw and attach it to your drill. And this is the reason why we went with the Rubbermaid containers because when you make circular cuts, it won't break your lid. Even though the pot size is 3 inch, the actual top part of it is more than 3 inch which sits above the container. Now depending on what you want to plant, you can make holes about 12, 8 or 6. 12 is great for lettuce and you can harvest continuously. 8 works for bok choy and kale and 6 is the best for larger plants. As a substrate to hold the plants, I use what they call leka clay pebbles. I use this mainly because they're reusable and you can wash them over and over again. You have an option of either buying a pre-made liquid nutrient to feed your plants or you can make your own and here's how I make mine. I usually compost a lot to feed my plants. And one of the setup I have is a vermicompost which allows me to turn my organic waste into worm castings which is pH balanced and contains several nutrients. To start, I'm using a 5 gallon bucket and filled it with water. This will be enough to fill at least 6 containers and you can also use this outside in your garden. Using a fine mesh bag, I filled it with 3 to 4 pounds of worm castings. The next ingredient that we're going to use is seaweed. We're using kelp because it contains trace minerals and a few other nutrients. For every gallon of water, you want to use 6 ounces of kelp. Lastly, we're going to use Epsom salt which contains magnesium. This also helps the plant absorb nutrients efficiently. For every gallon, use 5 teaspoons of Epsom salt and let this sit for 24 hours. Additionally, for a more potent mix, you can add molasses and air bubbler for oxygen. Afterwards, use a fine filter to strain your mix. This will remove any debris and prevent your system from getting clogged. For the final step, you want to dilute your mix before using it. The ratio is 5 parts water and 1 part nutrient mix. As a bonus, you can use the same bin to create what they call a Kratky hydroponic system, which is mainly nutrient and water without the air pump. As the water goes down, oxygen is created and you don't need to top it off with water. This system is good for fast growing plants like lettuce. And here's a few plants that you can consider growing. Lettuce, kale, swiss chard, bok choy, tatsoi, mizuna, peppers, tomatoes, and eggplants. And experiment with other varieties to see what you can grow. Because I'm using leka as a substrate to hold my plants, it makes it harder to start seeds directly. To avoid this, you can use rock wool substrate which allows you to seed directly. The downside to rock wool is that you have to keep repurchasing them because you can't reuse them over and over again. On the upside, by germinating my seeds directly in soil, it allows me to have a good healthy seedlings. This has been working really well for me, I don't have to keep purchasing rock wool. To transplant the seedlings, I carefully remove the soil in water. Sometimes you do have to separate the seedlings, but you just have to be careful with the roots. The seedlings do go through a little bit of shock, but once the roots set in water, they'll grow really fast. Now I mainly grow hydroponic in water, but this can be done outdoors too in the summer. You just have to be aware that the water needs to be cool to prevent it from going bad. So I recommend placing your containers exposed to morning sun or partly shaded area. 
Also cover your net pots with foil if you're doing this outdoors to prevent algae growth and mosquitoes from laying their eggs. If you're setting up indoors, add a fan in your area to circulate the air. By growing our food indoors in these containers, it makes it so much more convenient and we're able to harvest during the winter season, which is a big plus for us. Depending on what type of plants you want to grow, you can either use a grow light or a bright window. If you're using a bright window, you need at least 6 to 8 hours of sun exposure. I do find that using grow light works really well indoors. There is an additional cost monthly but not much. Technology has improved significantly and these LED lights are more efficient nowadays. For example, the light that I'm using is dimmable and I'm able to use it from 40 to 100% light exposure. I run my lights for 12 hours a day at nighttime which is a lot cheaper. So the monthly cost for me is about 6 to $10 which is definitely worth the investment because I'm able to grow 50 plants under a single light. If you haven't tried growing your own food, it's never too late to start. I like that there's so many options to do it, and for us, hydroponic is a great option considering that we have a short season gardening. So take the time to explore other options to grow your own food that will work in your space.